Hello, thank you. Thank you for having us. We are very excited to be here in the Async API conference. We are Rolando Carrasco and Leonardo Gonzalez from Mexico. We are part of SPS, which is a consulting firm here in Mexico. Um, we are in the second day of the Async API conference, November 17, and we are here to talk about the relevance of the API first approach together with the Async API specification. And this is the agenda for today. Um, we're going to talk, or we're going to start talking about the relevance of the APIs in the digital transformation era. Uh, we are going to question ourselves about the challenges of describing APIs on uh, event-driven architectures. We are also going to describe uh, which uh, elements we need to include or incorporate in APIs around EDA. Then uh, we are going to uh, highlight the value of mixing the API first approach with the async API specification. And then we're going to finalize our session with a real life scenario. And then we're going to give some conclusions, all right? Uh, I am Rolando Carrasco. I am here with, with Leonardo Gonzalez. We are both part of SPS Solutions. As, as I already mentioned, it's a consulting firm. We are focused on API development and design and, and other things uh, using different technologies such as uh, MuleSoft, Oracle, and some others. And uh, if you want to contact us in the future because you like this session or you have any questions around it, these are the right channels where you can find us, either LinkedIn, email, or Twitter, all right? So this is a brief uh, summary about my career. I started in Lycos.com back in 2000. You can remember Lycos as one of the first search engines, search engines in the web. Then I joined Hewlett Packard back in 2001. And actually in Hewlett Packard, I started my career in terms of integration technologies. And then I moved to Oracle in 2002 and continued with that uh, integration technologies and, and SOA and all those things back in, in the 2000s. And then at the end of the 2000, um, 2009, 2010, I started my, my own company, SPS, and we are focused mainly in integration platforms and API technologies and modern uh, architectures in general. And um, I like, as my hobbies, to, to collect uh, old-fashioned video games. And also, I run a brick and mortar store here in Mexico City. It is a pop store, uh, we sell vinyl toys. So, so pretty much that's, that's myself, so Leo. Yeah, thank you, Rol. So thank you for, for being here in this session. So some of my technical background, I started programming Java back in 2003. I used the, you know, Java, Struts, Hibernate and, and so on. I also designed some stuff using UML. And then I jumped into the integration world. I moved into integration architectures, uh, some backend stuff, web services, and finally APIs. I used uh, SOAP, of course, now REST uh, services, uh, and different technologies such as Oracle SOA Suite, uh, now more modern technologies such as Docker containers, MuleSoft, API-led connectivity, application networks, and, and so on. I'm an enthusiastic of a craft, of, of a craft beer. So a, I opened my own bottle shop and I'm running right now a tasting room here in Mexico City. So if you are around the city, just contact me and you are very welcome to this place. Good, so let's get started. Um, this is our first slide and we want to start with it. And we've been starting our presentation in the past years with this very same slide because we highlight the relevance of the APIs in the digital transformation era. And we say that the digital transformation turn us speechless and we are thanking the APIs for that. And we are saying that because if you think about different activities that you used to do in the past and you compare it on how you are doing it now. For example, a web check-in for a hotel or, a, or an airline 
or uh, asking for a Uber uh, ride, for example, you, you will find a lot of differences and you can do all those activities without the need of talking with someone, without having a conversation with a person. That's what I'm trying to say because of the way those uh, applications are built. <clears throat> and part of the success of those applications is because they are somehow driven by APIs. You as a user, you are not aware that you are calling a specific API every time that you do a check-in to your hotel or, a, or an airline. But at the end of the day or behind the scenes, most of those applications are interacting with APIs. So I think we are surrounded by APIs and those APIs are enabling us to do activities in such a way that we, we, we probably don't need to talk with someone. And I am not highlighting that, that we don't have conversation with persons, but what I'm highlighting is the impact that those APIs have. So, so that's the point. Yeah, and the question that comes to my mind is if you we are living in a, in a happy world, in a world that are surrounded by APIs. And if we take a look on some websites, uh, these are some cool websites. The first one is uh, the programmable web. It's an API directory. Uh, here you can search over the 24,000 APIs, public APIs and much more, some news about the APIs and, and so on. This morning I received this uh, report uh, from Postman about the APIs and, and I, I, it's, it's funny because uh, we are going to talk about the APIs, we are going to talk about the API first approach and I received this this morning. And the conclusion for these years is that the pandemic uh, changed the world and the world responded with API. So that is a, a cool thing because uh, our job is to create a API. So that is cool for me. Uh, secondly, the API ecosystem is global and, and growing up. So it's not only a one country or, or a small amount of countries but the APIs ecosystem is all around the world. So that is a cool thing also. Uh, uh, the third thing is that the developers are spending more and more and more time with APIs, using APIs. The companies are investing uh, more money uh, on the development of uh, the APIs. And the quality is the top priority for the, when we are talking about, when we are thinking of, of APIs. And more companies are embracing the API first philosophy, which is a thing that we are going to, to cover in this session. It's a cool thing. And the seventh thing is that uh, being API first pays off. So it, it's worth it. So we need to spend uh, more time designing APIs and, and, and thinking in, in APIs. What do you think, Rolando? Yeah, it's, it's very good information what you just shared, uh, Leo. And also we can highlight that, the relevance of the APIs in the world, in the economy itself, with some uh, very specific examples. So if you think about top 10 fintechs in the US, for example, this is a report from Forbes. And I would like to highlight two things. The first one is that for example, these fintech uh, companies are API-driven companies. So most of the times they are using APIs from third parties and they also offer APIs for, for, their, for their customers. So, so they are API-driven uh, companies. And if you see, that's the first thing that I would like to highlight is the value of those companies. Stripe, for example, is a 95 billion uh, uh, US dollars company. So that's, that's a lot of, of money. That's a lot of value. And the other thing that I would like to highlight is that they are run, they are run by uh, very young people. So if you take a look to the CEOs of those companies, it is very young, uh, young people, right? So as you can see, the API system is just not a matter of a technology thing. It is a very relevant thing for the economy. And actually it is, it is somehow driving or um, the, the economy is somehow driven by, by them. So. So we are talking in, in, uh, around a very um, relevant topic now. And what about the APIs when we think in an event-driven architecture? So uh, probably you wonder if you can describe APIs that support this type of architecture. And the answer is yes. Uh, there is a thing uh, called async API where uh, 
that you can use to describe this type of uh, APIs over this type of uh, architecture. So we are going to cover this, this, uh, uh, this syntax or this uh, specification more in detail. But yes, the answer is yes, you can define APIs even if you are using uh, this type of architectures. Yes, and some of the challenges that we identified, and that is why we, we raised this question, is that can we describe by an API those different events, channel subjects of, of an EDI architecture? So you may be wondering that. Obviously, we are here in the Async API conference, and that is the answer for that. But previously, before Async API, the question is, can we describe it? Because we normally think about APIs with normal uh, HTTP synchronous calls, et cetera. And it is pretty easy to identify how can we describe them. But what about events? It can be challenging, definitely. And the challenge is because we have a diversity of messaging systems. So it is very common to have Kafka or RabbitMQ, JMS, AWS, SQS, and so on in order to communicate our systems in order to produce events. So that's the challenge that we have a very large diversity of messaging systems. Yeah, and we normally care about the, the implementation stuff uh, such as messages, protocols, and deliver policies and so on, but not about the specification. It's uh, normal because we are developers. So we, we think about the code. But it's a very important thing to take care about the, the specification itself. Uh, for example, if we take a look on this picture, uh, we can see that we are using for this architecture a Kafka broker, and we start thinking how to connect with that uh, Kafka broker, how to send a message to that broker, how to retrieve a message from that broker, what is the bootstrap we need to use, uh, what about the transactions? Can we use a single transaction? Should we use a single transaction or not? That, that, that are the first things that uh, comes to our minds uh, in this type of uh, architectures. But we don't care about the, the, the specification and that is not a good thing at all. Yes. and. As you mentioned, Leo, we will normally ask for the SDKs. That, that will be our first pitch, if you will, about having this type of diagrams. And we are, a, let's imagine that we are a group of developers and we need to solve the situation that you just described in the previous image. The first question maybe will be, okay, so I am going to use a consumer which is based on Java. So what is, the, what is my SDK in order to, to consume that message? So we normally go into that direction before thinking in the specification itself. So what we are trying to do in this session is to, to take you to this scenario about the relevance of having that specification and the relevance of writing that specification before anything. So as with any other architecture, like, I mean, technology or any other type of architecture, we need a way to design okay, what we are going to build. So we need to represent what we are going to build. And it is it is better to have it first. So every time you build a, a house or whatever, it is you have the blueprints for that. That's the first thing that you that you design, right? So it is the very same thing now. So uh, the uh, here the, the the idea is that we need to create the specification first, which is the API first approach and then code something. So first of all, we need to create a specification that will be solid and that will remain useful for the developers over time. So not only today or tomorrow or, or in the next month, but over the time. So, so uh, that is when the API first approach comes to the rescue. And what exactly is this thing? Uh, so we need to plan some, some stuff. We need to get some feedback uh, first. We need to refine our API specification and then we can think about the code. Yeah, so before getting into those details about how to connect to the messaging system, it is better to describe the, those events that are going to, to be happening within your architecture. So 
just think about it for a minute. So if you first describe that something is going to create an event, now whoever is going to produce that event is going to know the event that is, um, how, how the event that it is described. And, and the persons or the, the application that needs to consume that event, the, the message of that event, then they know the structure and the protocol and ports and channels and whatever, right? So that, that's the value for that. So all of that is clear, but again, we are talking about events, right? Yeah, yeah. And here is where the API first approach and the ACI, async API, sorry, uh, get together and work together. So uh, how can we combine these two things? Yes, um, this is the value. We, we, we try to summarize some of the values for, for doing that mix of, uh, uh, of visions, the, the API first approach and the async API specification. And modern architectures and modern development are driven by events. So it is pretty normal to, to have events in our application. So if you don't use async API to describe your specification, then you are going to struggle a little bit to, to share what your component is going to publish and then to share what others needs to use in order to consume those events. So the, the, the value for that is what, I'm, what we are trying to, to highlight here. And it doesn't matter if it is events or they are not based on events. The API itself has, has this um, essence of describing what you are going to build. So it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is that you can keep doing what you are already uh, used to do in order to describe your normal uh, REST APIs, but now think about it with the event-driven architecture. And if you get the value from the event-driven architecture and you translate it to an API, then we are going to show you um, how, how, how powerful it is. Okay, so what do you typically start uh, or what do you do in order to document uh, um, an event-driven architecture layer? What's needed? Yeah, do? yeah. We need to, to, as you mentioned before, we need to document something. We need to create the specification itself. So, in an event driven architecture, uh, we need to describe what the servers are, what protocols are we going to use, what are the URLs, what are the channels, uh, what are the operations, uh, are we going to publish messages or are we going to subscribe an application to a to a queue or to a topic and so on. Uh, what are the, the structures of the messages that we are going to interchange in this, in this architecture? So all those things uh, are available in Async API and you can describe uh, different servers, different protocols, different channels, uh, different type of uh, operations and different uh, message structure, uh, structures. All those things are available in the Async API specification to create our uh, particular APIs. Yes, so now let's move to the real world uh, scenario. So this is a pawn shop where customers bring their goods to be evaluated. So we have an agent or a person in the pawn shop who, who is in charge of evaluating the goods that the customers present to them. And every time uh, this person accepts the good and makes an offering to the customer and the customer accepts the offering, the information of that, of that transaction needs to get into different um, applications such as, uh, such as the accounting system, the scoring system, a CRM, a risk management system. And then also they need to publish that information in a real-time dashboard in order to, to get to know how well the business is running in the different branches of this pawn shop. So as you can see, there is, a, there is a, an event that needs to get uh, produced in, within that transaction. And there are other applications that are interested on that event. So it seems to be a very, or a very straightforward uh, scenario for us, right? Um, the infrastructure or from the infrastructure point of view, we have uh, RabbitMQ for the message broker, the, the pound uh, application or the pawn shop, uh, sorry, the pawn shop application or the POS, it is based in Java. We have a risk management uh, solution, which is based in Oracle BPM. 
uh, suite. We also have the scoring system, uh, which is a Java-based system. Accounting is .NET. CRM is Salesforce, and the real-time dashboard is based on React and with a Node.js backend. So we have a diversity of technologies. We have the POS in Java and the rest of the technologies with, with a different uh, platform. Yeah, yeah. In this, in this uh, example, in these real life examples, we need to describe or we need to identify and describe some elements uh, for our APIs. So these are the elements that we already identified for that uh, real life examples. For, for example, we have one event to get described, the good, which was accepted, but the pound shop. And then we need to produce a message. Who is going to produce that message? Uh, well, the, the POS application will produce a message once the good uh, is accepted uh, to the uh, particular channel that will uh, make available that information for the interested system. So we already identified these elements. We need uh, what uh, do we need to, to interchange, uh, which is the good or the information about the good, uh, who is going to produce the event and who is going to consume the event. So in, in this case, for example, the application interested in this type of event are the, the, the CRM, the risk management systems, the scoring systems, and so on. All the systems we mentioned before are the applications that are interested in this type of uh, application. So let's identify some differences from the point of view of uh, using an EDA, EDA or not using an EDA. In this, in this case, what happened if we don't use an architecture of this type, eh, Rolando? Yes, let's imagine that we don't use CDA for this because it is very clear. Uh, the POS is going to create um, an event and then we have multiple applications interested on that event because they need to process that information. Right? But just let's imagine that we don't produce event and we don't use a message broker for that and that the POS directly needs to deliver the message to those different systems. So probably the owners of those different systems are going to describe different APIs so the POS can connect to them, right? So at least in this case, we have five different APIs that we need to describe and we need to, to develop, which is not bad. We're just talking about five different APIs and probably a, a very small group of operation for this very uh, use case, yes? but let's imagine that you need to add an additional system. The POS will need to understand a new API in order to connect to that specific system. Or if a system changes, okay, so changes for some reason, then we need to incorporate those changes for the, for the POS and so on. So that's, that's the main difference. In this case, for the EDA uh, architecture, we are just going to describe one single uh, API and in the other hand, we will have to describe five different APIs at least. So you, you, you can see the value for this and you can see the difference. Yeah, uh, so let's take a look at the API we described for this uh, real scenario using async API uh, notation. So let's have uh, some fun. If, uh, the, the good news here is that Async API provides a playground that you can use to create your specification. Uh, it has uh, a lot of cool things. Uh, for example, every time you change your specification here on the left of the, of the screen, the uh, playground will auto-generate the documentation for that API. So you, you will see reflected the documentation updated uh, in the right side of the screen. So that is a cool thing. It's a visual way to, to, to see uh, what are the parts of your API specification. So when you open this thing, uh, you, uh, Async API Playground will provide you with a sample API, which in this case is the Streetlights API. 
but uh, we already wrote, write our API using this uh, syntax. Uh, this is based on YAML, so it's easy to read, it's easy to write, it's easy to start describing your API. For example, in the first section, we have the information, the general information about our API. This is a pawn shop service. This is the version 1.0.0. And we have a description here about what the API is going to, to, to deliver to the developers that are going to use this API, okay? We have some channels. In this case, we have a channel called uh, Goods Evaluated. This channel uh, is to use, you are going to use this channel when you need to interact with the evaluated goods, as we mentioned before in the real case scenario. If you need to process some information about the evaluated goods, uh, you are going to use the subscribe operation. If you need to, to, to publish or to uh, produce some messages about uh, goods that has been evaluated, you are going to use the publish uh, operation. All that documentation is reflected here in the right side of the screen. In this case, we have the subscribe operation and we have the structure of the message that we are going to interchange or that we are going to push to, to, to that channel, okay? Uh, in the documentation, we can see that we have information about the customer, in this case, the number ID and the full name. We have information about the, the branch, the branch ID, the name and the city. And we have information about the, the, the items or the goods that is, is, is going to be evaluated. In this case, we have the name of the good and the description of the good. And finally, we have the total amount of the loan that we that represent the value of all these goods that are received or the, that that the pawn shop received in the POS. So we can describe everything here, and we will see the documentation here. It's a fun thing to start uh, playing with the async API and, and to describe this type of architectures. So uh, this is how the playground uh, looks like in this case. And Rolando? Yes, so we're going to start concluding our session. And the main purpose of this was to highlight how to get value from the API first approach together with AC API specification uh, within an EDA architecture. So as you can see, one single API, it is used to understand what is going to be published. And if you are interested on that event, just consume the message and that's it. So that's, that's the power of this. So remember just one single API, just describe the event and you get to know how it's going to get published and what is going to get consumed. If there is an additional consumer interested on that, you don't need to modify anything. You don't need to mess with the others because something changed in that new system. You can continue using the, the very same API and incorporate as much consumers as you need. If you change the message for some reason, then all the systems are going to get um, impacted, but probably they can um, beforehand know that those changes are going to happen because of the description in the API. So it is it has a lot of value and hopefully we are uh, transmitting this message for you. And uh, as I mentioned, if a new system is integrated, then the, the, the specification remains valid. Okay, no one needs to make any type of change. I, I was forgetting that, that message, but that, that's very relevant. Okay, Leo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just to finalize this session, uh, we can recommend that uh, describe the API first and then start coding. But be sure that the, your API is solid. Uh, be sure that your API is gonna be is gonna be useful for the developers that are going to use. Uh, these uh, features or this information about uh, the what you are publishing uh, using this type of uh, architectures, and also take a look on the on the on the Postman report uh, about this. 
why this API first approach is very important, not, not only for us as a developers, but for the companies. This, this is a, a very important approach. It has a lot of information about uh, real cases in the world that companies that are implementing this uh, type of approach uh, in his API uh, initiatives. So that's pretty much what we have for you guys. Yes, thank you, Leo. So if you have any questions, we, uh, we can answer them. If you want to contact us, uh, we already um, share with you our um, direct channels, Twitter, LinkedIn, or email. So as we started with this session, we are very happy to be here. We're very pleased to be, uh, or to be part of this agenda of the Async API conference. And, and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.